Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Chapter One. The Workhouse. The Workhouse. A long time ago, every town in England had a workhouse. A long time ago, every town in England had a workhouse. I need three for the dye house with fellows Wickham and Barnum. Chris, when I call you, you'll see you now. Chris. This was a house for very poor people. This was a house for very poor people. Oliver Twist was born in a workhouse. Oliver Twist was born in a workhouse. His mother was a young woman. His mother was a young woman. His mother was a young woman. She was very ill when she came to the workhouse. She was very ill when she came to the workhouse. A doctor and a woman were with her. A doctor and a woman were with her. After Oliver Twist was born, his mother said. After Oliver Twist was born, his mother said. I want to see my baby, and then die. I want to see my baby, and then die. I want to see my baby, and then die. You are too young to die," said the woman. "You are too young to die. You are too young to die." The doctor put the little baby in his mother's arms. The doctor put the little baby in his mother's arms. She kissed the baby, and died. She kissed the baby, and died. She's dead. Said the doctor, "She's dead. She's dead." Poor dear, she came here last night. Poor dear, she came here last night. Poor dear, she came here last night. No one knows where she's from," said the woman. "No one knows where she's from. No one knows where she's from." The old woman began to dress the baby with very old clothes. The old woman began to dress the baby with very old clothes. Hold him. I named the babies alphabetically for practicality's sake. Let's see, the last lad was、uh, Swizzle, Swizzle, T, Twist, Oliver Twist.
Oliver was alone in the world. Oliver was alone in the world. He was an orphan. He was an orphan. He was an orphan. No one loved him. No one loved him. When Oliver was small, he lived in an orphanage with other orphans. When Oliver was small, he lived in an orphanage with other orphans. He and the other children had very little food, and very little love. He and the other children had very little food, and very little love. Many of the children died because they were cold or hungry. Many of the children died because they were cold or hungry. Oliver survived, but he was small and thin. Oliver survived, but he was small and thin. His face was very white. His face was very white. On his ninth birthday, Oliver left the children's home. On his ninth birthday, Oliver left the children's home. He was sad to leave his only friends. He was sad to leave his only friends. He went to live in a workhouse. He went to live in a workhouse. He worked long hours for the workhouse. He worked long hours for the workhouse. Hurry up, don't dawdle. I know you, lazy slug of it. I need three for the die house with fellows Wickham and Varnum. Chris. When I call you'll see you now. Piss! They gave him only one bowl of porridge three times a day. They gave him only one bowl of porridge three times a day. And an onion twice a week. And an onion twice a week. They gave him only one bowl of porridge three times a day, and an onion twice a week. Lord, make us truly thankful for this bounteous feast. Lord, make us truly thankful for this bounteous feast. And bless the generous widow Corney. And bless the generous widow Corney. Amen. Amen. On Sundays, he had a small piece of bread. On Sundays, he had a small piece of bread. Oliver and his companions were very hungry and very unhappy. Oliver and his companions were very hungry and very unhappy. They never asked for a second bowl of porridge. They never asked for a second bowl of porridge. They never asked for a second bowl of porridge. They were afraid. They were afraid. But after three months, they became terribly hungry. But after three months, they became terribly hungry. One day, Oliver took his empty bowl to the master. One day, Oliver took his empty bowl 
to the master. Please, sir, he said, I want some more porridge. Please, sir, I want some more porridge. Please, sir, I want some more porridge. The master looked at Oliver. The master looked at Oliver. He was surprised. He was surprised. What? he said. What? 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 Please, sir, he said. I want some more porridge. The master hit Oliver with his big spoon. The master hit Oliver with his big spoon. Then he called Mr. Bumble. Then he called Mr. Bumble. He was an important officer of the town. He was an important officer of the town. What? cried Mr. Bumble. What? cried Mr. Bumble. Go get some more. What's the matter? You scared? Therefore, pride composite them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. Please, ma'am. I want some more. Did you say? Please, ma'am. I want some more. Nobody asked some more in my workhouse. See how you like sleeping in the gutter and eating in the cold. <laughs> my locket, ma'am. I need my locket. Take it, Daddy, when you were 12. My birthday's tomorrow. I'll be 12 tomorrow. Oh, you he took Oliver to the directors of the workhouse and said... He took Oliver to the directors of the workhouse and said, Oliver Twist asked for more porridge. Oliver Twist asked for more porridge. For, for more porridge? They cried. For, for more porridge? For, for more porridge? They looked at each other. They looked at each other. They were surprised. They were surprised. He, he must, must leave, leave the workhouse. workhouse. He, he must, must leave, leave the workhouse. workhouse. Mr. Bumble put Oliver in a cold, dark room for one week. Mr. Bumble put Oliver in a cold, dark room for one week. Every morning, Mr. Bumble beat Oliver with a stick in front of his friends. Every morning, Mr. Bumble beat Oliver with a stick in front of his friends. Oliver cried all day, and he did not sleep at night. Oliver cried all day, and he did not sleep at night. One day... Mr. Bumble met his friend, Mr. Sowerberry. One day, Mr. Bumble met his friend, Mr. Sowerberry. Mr. Sowerberry was a tall, thin man. Mr. Sowerberry was a tall, thin man. He made coffins for dead bodies. He made coffins for dead bodies. Many of the dead bodies came from the workhouse. Many of the dead bodies came from the workhouse. Mr. Bumble asked, Do you want a boy to work in your shop? Do you want a boy to work in your shop? Do you want a boy to work in your shop? You will pay nothing... You will pay nothing, and we will give you five pounds. And we will give you five pounds. Mr. Sowerberry thought a moment and said, Mr. Sowerberry thought a moment and said, 
Yes, I want the boy and the five pounds. Yes, I want the boy and the five pounds. Mr. Bumble was happy. Mr. Bumble was happy. In the evening, he took Oliver to Mr. Sowerberry's shop. In the evening, he took Oliver to Mr. Sowerberry's shop. Oliver looked at Mr. Bumble and started crying. Oliver looked at Mr. Bumble and started crying. <laughs> I want to be a good boy. <laughs> I want to be a good boy. I am a very little boy, sir. I am a very little boy, sir. And it is so lonely, so very lonely. And it is so lonely, so very lonely. Oliver's thin face was covered with tears. Oliver's thin face was covered with tears. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Chapter One The Workhouse. A long time ago, every town in England had a workhouse. This was a house for very poor people. Oliver Twist was born in a workhouse. His mother was a young woman. She was very ill when she came to the workhouse. A doctor and a woman were with her. After Oliver Twist was born, his mother said. I want to see my baby, and then die. You are too young to die," said the woman. The doctor put the little baby in his mother's arms. She kissed the baby, and died. She's dead," said the doctor. Poor dear, she came here last night. No one knows where she's from," said the woman. The old woman began to dress the baby with very old clothes. Oliver was alone in the world; he was an orphan. No one loved him. When Oliver was small, he lived in an orphanage with other orphans. He and the other children had very little food, and very little love. Many of the children died because they were cold or hungry. Oliver survived, but he was small and thin. His face was very white. On his ninth birthday, Oliver left the children's home. He was sad to leave his only friends. He went to live in a workhouse. He worked long hours for the workhouse. They gave him only one bowl of porridge three times a day, and an onion twice a week. On Sundays, he had a small piece of bread. Oliver and his companions were very hungry, and very unhappy. They never asked for a second bowl of porridge; they were afraid. But after three months, they became terribly hungry. One day, Oliver took his empty bowl to the master. Please, sir, he said, I want some more porridge. The master looked at Oliver. He was surprised. What? He said. Please, sir, he said, I want some more porridge. The master hit Oliver with his big spoon. Then he called Mr. Bumble. He was an important officer of the town. What? cried Mr. Bumble. He took Oliver to the directors of the workhouse and said, 
Oliver Twist asked for more porridge. For more porridge? They cried. They looked at each other. They were surprised. He, He must, must leave, leave the, the workhouse. workhouse. Mr. Bumble put Oliver in a cold, dark room for one week. Every morning, Mr. Bumble beat Oliver with a stick in front of his friends. Oliver cried all day, and he did not sleep at night. One day, Mr. Bumble met his friend, Mr. Sourberry. Mr. Sourberry was a tall, thin man. He made coffins for dead bodies. Many of the dead bodies came from the workhouse. Mr. Bumble asked, Do you want a boy to work in your shop? You will pay nothing, and we will give you five pounds. Mr. Sowerberry thought a moment and said, Yes, I want the boy and the five pounds. Mr. Bumble was happy. In the evening, he took Oliver to Mr. Sowerberry's shop. Oliver looked at Mr. Bumble and started crying. I want to be a good boy. I am a very little boy, sir. And it is so lonely. So very lonely. Oliver's thin face was covered with tears.